Hello, I'm Dr. John Supan with the Louisiana Sea Grant College Program, and today we're discussing uh, the setup and operation of a drum nursery system. In front of us, we have a 15 drum system with 12 drums operating, with water flowing up through the drums and discharging into a drainage ditch. On the back side, between me and the drums, are, are a manifold system to deliver seawater to each individual silo. Okay, you can see that each one of these silos is discharging into a ditch. This is permitted in this area. We put a pond liner in it to have it run back into the bay. If your local ordinances allow that, this is fine. Uh, it can be as simple as this or it can be as complicated as having them pour into a drainage system uh, made out of pipe. This system operates on a five horsepower pacer pump. It has a three inch intake and a, and a three inch discharge. The intake line at the water's edge has a removable check valve connected with rubber couplings to be able to fill that intake line up with water to set up to prime the pump. This pump is plumb so that you have here you take the cap off to go ahead and put in water to prime the pump with. The check valve obviously works so it holds the water in the in the line until you put the pump on or turn the pump on. Right here you have two valves. This is your main valve going to your manifold to the silos. And this is a valve that goes to a, uh, a hose to service the system, the wash seed with. So what you could do is close this valve off, open this valve and close this valve off to run water to the hose so you can service the system. Okay, here we have a service disconnect for his electrical supply to the pump. It's real important that you have a licensed electrician do this. You're going to be sticking your hands in the water and the water is being delivered by the pump. So you want to make sure all this is done to code and that it's, it's protected, ground fault protected, so you don't have a hazard, electrical hazard to yourself or your employees. The manifold here is made of, this one is made out of three inch pipe. You could also use four. It need not be schedule 40. Drainage, or drainage pipe or what we call sewer line pipe, the thinner wall pipe is suitable as long as you open a valve before you close the valve because it's not really suited for high pressure. The manifold services at this time 12 different drums and you see the water flow going into the ditch. And each manifold has a valve to be able to adjust the flow rate to each drum. So here we have a three inch manifold made out of sewer line pipe with a uniseal, a length of one inch and a half pipe to a male adapter, to a valve, to a, a male adapter with tubing a tubing adapter, a one foot length of flexible tubing, reinforced tubing, to a male adapter, and then to a female adapter for that screw into. And then there's a short length of inch and a half pipe going through that rubber unit seal into the bottom of the silo. Now in a previous video we showed where you make this connection with a, with a female adapter and a coupling, a short length of pipe where you glue it together and kind of sandwich it between the wall of the base of the drum. You can also use an inch and a half uniseal to make this connection. You can see there's three uh, valves here going to drums that aren't in service right now. Right here at the end of the manifold we have a valve which is important to be able to bleed off excess water pressure if you need to, especially if you have very young seed in the system. Too much water flow will fluidize the seed bed and possibly even wash the seed right out of the silo. So it's good to have a valve at the end of your manifold to be able to bleed off excess pressure. The other reason you have the valve is that in case you want to drain the line to keep barnacles and, and wild oysters from growing in your manifold, once a week when you break your nursery system down to clean it, you can drain the line, close it off, and if you have a fresh water source here, you can fill up that line with fresh water and let it soak with fresh water for an hour or so while you're servicing the system, and that'll help reduce your fouling inside your plumbing. Okay, it's a simple way of checking the flow rate. This is a three gallon bucket here. You put it underneath the discharge and you time it. And in this case, it takes 20 seconds to fill up three gallons, which makes that nine gallons a minute. This is a 15 drum system. So when you do the math, that comes out to about 135 gallons a minute for the total system. So when you're selecting a pump, you're gonna to wanna to select a pump that puts out somewhere between 135 to 150 gallons a minute at five foot ahead for a 15 drum system. One of the daily maintenances that you can do with this system is put on a pair of gloves and you reach in and you stir the seed mass. As you can see here, the water's clear because the seed 
has filtered out all the food out of the water, which is the green algae, microscopic algae. Also, it has trapped some sediment, which can, if you leave, leave that unattended, it can cause the seed to smother in, in the seed mass. So it's a smart thing to do about once a day is to put on a pair of gloves and you reach in there and stir the seed up. Now this seed's pretty large seed, as you can see here. Uh, this operator uh, has the seed in here because he's waiting to deploy it out into his cages. But so you want to get in there and, and stir that seed up, reach down to the bottom where the screen is on the silo and just stir that seed up and let the, so the flow running through the silo will wash it out. And then you reach in there and just smooth them out even when you're done. And that'll slowly rinse all that silt out of the silo. Another part of maintenance of the system is, is cleaning the system. Unfortunately, this operator does not have a fresh water or a hose here to operate with, but normally you would clean this with a gasoline pressure washer or electric pressure washer, high pressure preferably, say 1800 PSI pressure washer, and hook it up to a regular hose, a fresh water hose, and break this system down and clean it, say once a week. But since this site doesn't have fresh water available, that's, that's not, uh, an option for him. But you can break this system down and use a scratch pad or a, or a scouring pad to, to clean the walls and everything to, to uh, for maintenance purposes. Well, if you plumb your pump correctly to where you can shut some of the flow off to an auxiliary uh, hose, this gives you the water pressure you need to be able to wash your seed. You would, no, you would drain your, your drum silo by pushing in on the uh, rubber stopper on the base, closing off the valve, and then just rinse your seed with a seawater hose. Let's say a few words about picking a site for an oyster seed nursery. It's important that you have good water quality, always. You want to take a look around at your watershed, make sure you don't have any uh, uh, shipyards that are blasting old uh, anti-fouling paint off boats that could get in the water. Uh, you also want to be careful that you're not around areas where they're spraying a lot of, of uh, pesticides or herbicides. Uh, one sure way of being able to tell if the water's salty enough for a nursery system is to just look at your surroundings along the shoreline. If you see wild oysters growing there, that's a very good indication that you got, got to have a good nursery site to grow oyster seed. If you don't, it's very likely that your water is too fresh for a nursery.